Hi there, we're Peter and Kathy Holcomb. We go by the handle of Famagogo, and we have a lot of new subscribers to our channel. We want to welcome you guys and thank you so much for hitting that button and coming along on this massive journey that we're doing. And just the other day we were talking that probably a lot of you guys don't really know us that well, and maybe doing a little Q&A video would help introduce us to you, let you know our background. So. We've collected some questions. These are the questions that we get asked all the time, anytime we meet somebody new, and we thought we would just share our answers with all of you so that you can get to know us a little bit better. And if you guys have more questions, please leave them in the comments down below. We're happy to answer those, but hopefully this video will get through a lot of them for you guys. So what? who are you and what's your story? Ah, okay, so like I said a second ago, we're Peter. I'm Peter, this is Kathy. <laughs> I'm Kathy. And we go by the handle of Famagogo. What does Famagogo mean? Well, Famagogo started as the family on the go, go. And we started traveling 10 years ago with our daughter, Abby. We took her out of traditional school when she was in fourth grade and started traveling. What was gonna be a one month trip turned into a six month trip, turned into a year long trip. And we wanted to take Abby and show her all over the Western US and basically take her to our favorite places and give her these incredible experiences. And we did that. We bought a Winnebago RV. I think we went to over 35 states that first year on the road. It was a wonderful year. And actually when that year was over, we felt like we still had so much more to do, so many more things we wanted to share with Abby. And we found now in, in, in almost 10 years of continuous travel that your travel goals never get smaller. It's not <laughs> like you just whittle your list down. And you're like, okay, I'm done. I'm ready to go home. The more you travel, the more you learn and the more you learn that you don't know things and you want to go experience those things. And so that was exactly what happened our first year is we decided that, gosh, we are just scratching the surface. After that first year, we'd kind of figured out how to live on the road, how to work from the road, and things were just motoring along. So we decided, let's go for a second year. Then we did that second year and it was the same thing. It was just an incredible experience. We hadn't had enough. We were just living what we felt like was our best life ever. And so at that point we decided, let's not put a time limit on it. Let's just do this as long as it makes sense for us, as long as it's fun, as long as we feel like we're being productive and we're moving in a, in a direction that we want to be moving. Let's keep traveling. And now 10 years later, here we are still going on our biggest adventure yet. So who knows if this is ever going to end? We, we certainly don't. Um, we're just kind of taking this a year at a time and um, planning our next adventures. And that happens to fit in perfectly with this nomadic life of traveling around, exploring and seeing things and now creating videos for you guys. The next question is, what is Famagogo? What exactly is that? A lot of people who travel use a handle. It's just easier than saying the Holcomb family to say Famagogo. And, and a lot of families do this. Some of our favorites would be Epic Family Road Trip, Living the Van Life, Next Level Revel, Molly Mish. I mean, it goes on and on. That kind of gives you an idea. People come up with these handles and it's kind of becomes their online identity and it's just a little easier way to say and relate to someone in their adventure by using these handles. We wanted it to be more than just a big family vacation. We wanted it to mean something and we wanted it to have impact. And so we sat down with our good friend Scott Murphy and we kind of laid out what our purpose was and what our mission was and what we wanted to accomplish through this year of travel on the road. And what it came down to is that one, we wanted to go have amazing experiences in wonderful places, but two, we wanted to do that as a family. And at that time, there weren't very many families that were living full time on the road. Um, we only knew one other family that was doing this. And we kind of wanted to prove to the world that you don't have to wait until you retire to go have this amazing lifestyle that you can do this now. And so we worked really hard to figure out how to get our business mobile so that we could work from the road. We worked really hard to find an online school option for Abby. And then we set out for this grand adventure. And so to me, Famagogo is all about getting out there, doing amazing things, 
and inspiring other people that it is possible to live this life while you're young, while you have a family, and do these amazing things. We are Famagogo, and even if Abby isn't traveling with us every day right now, we're still Famagogo. You know, if you guys are new to this channel, you might not even know that we have a daughter named Abby. Tell us about Abby. So this is the really exciting thing. When we were traveling with Abby and showing her this amazingly unique lifestyle, we always kind of wondered, what's she gonna do when she grows up? Um, you know, is she gonna move to the city and become a stockbroker or do something totally opposite of this? Or is she gonna carry on in her footsteps? What's it gonna be? And we are so excited that just six months ago, she got her very own Winnebago adventure wagon and is out in the world on her own amazing road trip, exploring new places, visiting old favorite places, and building a life just like um, she's always had for the last 10 years on the road. We couldn't be more proud. So we've also traditionally as a family done tons of whitewater kayaking. You've seen these boats, these big orange things on the roof of our van and our videos. Those are our whitewater kayaks. Abby grew up kayaking and not only kayaking, but once we hit the road and we're traveling, she was able to kayak in the best rivers in North America at the best time of year with the best kayakers in the world. So she's kind of had a crash course in kayaking from being, a, you know, really she started when she was four. She, she had these amazing experiences starting at 10. Now she's 19 and she is a reigning world champion kayaker right now for freestyle kayaking. And freestyle kayaking is you've seen it probably in our videos a little bit but it's basically surfing a standing wave in a river so the water is moving through kind of like a rapid but the rapid will form a wave and then freestyle kayaking they're in these funny short little stubby boats and they're doing aerial acrobatic tricks on that wave and so it's kind of like crossing gymnastics and kayaking where you're doing aerial tricks and cartwheels and loops and somersaults but you're doing it in a boat on a wave so it's very dynamic and it's really a lot of fun to watch and it's even more fun to do. Um, but right now she is training for the world championships. She's down in Columbus, Georgia, which we're gonna fly in there here in a little bit. So you'll, you might see a little weird content where we go from Alaska to Georgia. So we're gonna go to Georgia and support her in her third world championships. The last world championships, she won the world championships as a junior. And now she is aged up into the women's category, the senior category, which starts at 19 and up. And this will be her first senior world championship. So we're gonna be there cheering her on. And Watching her paddle with all of her heroes that she's grown up with her whole life. It's gonna be a really neat full circle thing to watch her share the feature with these incredible, the world's best athletes. So our tagline has been inspiring adventure family style. And we still hold true to that, I think. Even if Abby's not with us, we've certainly inspired lots of adventure for us. She is now doing her own adventures. So it's come full circle in our family, but hopefully we've inspired you guys to go out there and live your best lives and take your family along with you. You know, it, if you're new to the channel, you might just think it's Kathy and I and we're a retired couple and we're off here doing all this cool stuff. And that couldn't be further from the truth. You know, we started this as a family with a 10 year old and um, a, a big yellow dog, Tucker. And, you know, we were definitely kind of the classic family, but we were doing a very untraditional thing. So anyway, there's a little bit about Abby. Um, look for her. We hope to do some adventures where we're all together in two Sprinter vans, two Winnebago's. All right, what's up next? Next question. Uh, this is the hardest question to answer. Where are you from? <laughs> Ooh, okay, I'll maybe start. Okay, so go for I, it. I grew up in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. I then um, traveled quite a bit. I did a lot of skateboarding, a lot of motorcycle racing, and traveled around doing that quite a bit. And I think that's probably my dad and I going to motorcycle races. Um, we had a van that we hauled our motorcycles in, and I think that's where I became a van man. I got this love for vans is from those times, and I realized that a van is such an amazing vehicle for doing so many things. I mean, it can be very utilitarian, it can be recreational, it can haul a lot, you can get in and out of the rain and the cold. It's just awesome. So um, then I went on to college at the University of Oklahoma where I met Kathy 
and we were doing a lot of rock climbing then. I mean, everything was about rock climbing. And so we got our college schedule set, so we had class three days a week, so we could rock climb four days a week. That's how much we were into it. And um, every chance we got, when there would be a spring break or definitely a summer break, we would pack up our little apartments, put, them, put all our stuff in storage, take our bare minimum, and we took off in my Honda Civic. And I had a little Honda Civic with a big Rubbermaid tote strapped to the roof that we put kind of like a storage box we put extra stuff in. And we would go off for a month, two months, three months, living out of our Honda Civic and traveling all over the West. It was a pretty awesome time. Pretty much Peter would pick me up from my final exam and we would get back the night before school started. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was awesome. And then we graduated from college the same year and Kathy took off to Colorado and we, we weren't sure if we were going to move to Colorado or California. They were two very amazing places to be as a rock climber. You know, you have Yosemite in California and then you have the whole Rocky Mountains and specifically dear to my heart was El Dorado Canyon right outside of Boulder. That was a place that I was just head over heels in love with and still am. Kathy took off and moved to Colorado while I was in Costa Rica finishing up a Spanish credit. And so when I came back from Costa Rica, I took off to Colorado to meet up with her and see if we could get jobs and figure out what this was like, you know, life after college. And we did. We made it work for almost 20 years. Yeah, we lived in Boulder, Colorado for 20 years. Did a lot of rock climbing. That's also where, um, well, a little before then we got into the whitewater kayaking. But kayaking was always kind of a secondary thing for us. It was um, something we did on hot days or rainy days, the two times when it's not that pleasant to climb. And then slowly, um, I think when Kathy was pregnant, the kayaking became something that we could do independent of each other. Because climbing, you know, I've got to hold the rope for her and she's got to hold the rope for me and we climb as a team. We're literally tied together. <laughs> and now we had Abby, we had this little baby, and we found ourselves needing to take turns doing things. and. The kayaking was great because we hooked up with a community through the Colorado Whitewater Association. We hooked up with a community of great people who are still dear friends today. And we would go paddle together as families. And that would usually mean the kids hung out and played. The dads would go paddle something in the morning. The moms would go paddle something together in the evening. And then we would all camp together and spend these long weekends together. And it was, it was awesome. But that's led to kayaking kind of taking over more of our emphasis than our climbing. And um, between those two sports, though, they've taken us to some of the most amazing places and some of the places that we like to return to, even if we're not doing those activities. They're just beautiful places. So with that being a long answer to where I'm from and kind of maybe how we got to where we are kind of now, where are you from? Oh, so I was born in California, Los Angeles, and my family and I spent as much time as possible out at Catalina Island on our Sea Ray power boat. And so I think that's where I got my love for traveling in small vessels. And um, when I was five, we moved to Arkansas to be closer to family. And I grew up there and then went to college in Oklahoma, met Peter, and you've heard the rest of that story. So where we commonly get asked that is we're at a gas station, somebody sees the van and they ask, where are you from? And that's always kind of hard to answer, right? It's a really hard question to answer because we lived in Colorado forever. Peter's from Oklahoma, I'm from Arkansas. Our domicile is based in South Dakota, and so we never know how to exactly answer that question. But um, Without it being a two-hour long conversation at the gas pump. Exactly. So, you know, if you ask us where we're from, the answer may vary <laughs> depending on... It's usually, what, our answer is usually we're from here. Yeah. Because we live in our van and wherever we are, we're home. And so we kind of think of it in a funny way that we've lived all these great places that we've traveled to. and so. Right now we live in Juneau, Alaska. <laughs> and that's a great segue to our next question, which is, where all have you been? Ah, how long do we have here? <laughs> Keep it short. You want me to start? In the last 10 years, we have been to all 50 states and we've been to Canada, Mexico, and 20 countries in Europe. In 2019, we shipped our Revel van to Europe we went from England to Croatia, east to west, and we went from the top of Norway all the way down to Italy, north and south, and explored every country in between. 
It was a great trip. Oh, it's and, a trip of a lifetime. And that trip has really budded our, our love for international travel. I mean, we traveled internationally before then, but not with our van. And I think traveling by camper van is the best way to see Europe. Now, you know, you can fly in, you can rent a car, and we've done that before, and you can go around and see things. But with a camper van, you can linger, and you can go to all the places that you really are hard to get to on a train or on a plane or even sometimes in a rental car because you can camp in these places. You're not stuck like going for the day and then you have to get back to a hotel. You can buy that awesome place and just stay there. And that's, that's really what we love about this whole lifestyle in general. But it was really clear in Europe that that was amazing. Tell us where we spend most of our time. Where do we spend most of our time? <laughs> we spend about a day in any given place. We travel um, every single day. We rarely spend more than three days in one place. But if I had to pick one place in the entire world where we spend more time than anywhere else, it's definitely Buena Vista, Colorado. Um, we have amazing friends with a place right on the Arkansas River, and we usually spend most of June right in there. Um, they've got a nice property there right on the banks of the river. And that's probably where we'll end up settling down someday if we ever settle down. Seems like it right now that like people always ask where our favorite places are and where we would move to. It's so hard to answer because everywhere is great sometimes and everywhere is terrible sometimes. And we haven't found that one place that really seems like it's awesome year round. I don't know it even exists, but Buena Vista is definitely a, a great spot. Okay, this one is probably the hardest question that we get asked and probably the one we get asked most frequently. Where's your favorite place? So this is a really hard thing to answer. It's kind of like asking, you know, if you have multiple dogs, what's your favorite dog or what's your favorite child or what's, you know, things that you really like all of them and you have to pick one. I mean, that would be really hard. I usually come back with the, with the, with a question of what time of year, because everywhere is great for some of the year, right? Like Colorado is amazing in the summer and the spring and really in the fall, the winters, if you like to ski, they're great in the winters too. Um, but, we've found that there's maybe other places that we like to be in the winter, like maybe in Baja. Gosh, you know, I mean, there's a lot of places. So it's really hard for us to narrow down, but I think if I had to pick maybe my top three, can you narrow it down to three? Like maybe, oh, yeah. or at least, at least what comes to mind now, if you ask us this 10 minutes from now, we might have a different answer, but my top three. Today. Right now, today would probably be favorite places of all time that we've traveled to would be the Dolomites of Italy, Gosh, Southern Utah. <laughs> you only get one more. What I do you know. Choose? <laughs> um, Colorado and. Nope, that's I, it. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I could I could live my life in Colorado and Utah and be really happy. But what about you? Um, so internationally, it's getting harder. The more we travel it abroad, is. the harder it gets. Um, I absolutely loved Croatia when we were there. That I loved kayaking through the Dalmatian Islands. Um, I loved spending the winter in Baja. Um, domestically, oof, it's got to be Colorado or Utah. Those are my definitely my two favorites. It's a pretty amazing place. So. Yeah, we're sitting here right now in Juneau, Alaska. I can see our ferry boat going by here in the background that we're going to have to catch here in a little bit. But, um, but Juno's amazing, and when the sun is out here, like the last couple of days, it has been glorious. Usually our favorite place is the last place we've been. <laughs> yeah, short, short memory. All right, what else have we got here? Um, why a Sprinter van? Why don't you oh, guys, yeah. I mean, you live full time, why don't you live in one of those big bus RVs? Yeah, <laughs> Let's, so we, we started off our first five years or so, Yeah. we had an RV, but it was a Class C RV, which means it's, built still on a van chassis. It was built on a Sprinter van chassis, had a box on the back, gave us more room as a family of three. And it was great for the, for that time period. It was wonderful. It was a Winnebago view. Our first RV was a 2008 Winnebago view. And we had two of them. We had a 2016 Winnebago view as well. Yeah. And they were awesome. They were great. We pulled along a big trailer full of kayaks and it served our needs as a family really well. But then, we wanted to go travel more internationally. We started feeling like North America was getting pretty small. We'd been all over the place. And we, to travel internationally, especially in Europe, it seemed like a smaller vehicle was gonna just be more liberating and give us the ability to go more places. We downsized then. Well, 
That was the year that Winnebago came out with the Revel. And we couldn't have been more excited for this adventure van to become ours and take us on this amazing trip to Europe. So we've been in Revels now ever since. That's and that's kind of funny. The Revel is very dear to our hearts. We were lucky enough to be a part of the Revel um, development before it was even called a Revel. And um, we went around um, with Winnebago to a bunch of shows where they showed some concept vehicles and then later became the Revel. But I'm a professional photographer and when the Revel was first, well really before it was announced, we created the whole campaign, the photography behind it, um, showing this amazing new van in action. Now I assume a lot of these people watching this are probably Revel owners and so you might enjoy this story. But Kathy and I picked up the first two Revels that were ever made and they had magnetic stickers over where it said Revel because the Winnebago didn't want anyone to know that name. It was top secret, hadn't been announced yet. And um, it said Joe's Guide Service in a magnetic sticker over the Revel. And our job was then to take those first two Revels, take them to Colorado and create images that were gonna be used for the launch. If you guys own Revels, I'm sure you've seen these images. Um, but we spent two weeks in Colorado creating these images and we did a whole tour through southern Utah making more content and then we came back and Winnebago did a big announcement where they brought in their top dealers and they flew them in and they unveiled the Revel to them and it was really powerful because we had one Revel that had been totally cleaned up and then we had the other Revel that we'd been in in Utah and it was covered in dust and mud and it was actually parked up on a rock with one wheel up in the air and it was so fun to show this vehicle. And honestly, like Kathy said, it became my dream vehicle. I've always liked vans and adventure vans. And um, I was like, oh my gosh, we gotta have one of these. And in fact, we bought that very first Revel. We couldn't part with it. I couldn't pry it out of Peter's hands. So our very first Revel was the very first Revel. And that's what we took to Europe and it went on to visit 20 different countries. Yeah, it was great. I hated to let that Revel go, but we okay. had to to get our second Revel, which, which when they redesigned and made a Revel 2.0, we had to have that one too. That was the 2021 Revel where it got the lithium upgrade and the fridge moved. And there was, it wasn't a huge change, but there was enough change in there to make it worth us to upgrade to the new one. And funny thing is, is we did the same thing. We took out the very first 2021 Revel, we shot a whole campaign with it, and then we kind of decided, gosh, this is really nice. Maybe we need to buy this one. And so we did. And we took that one on to all over the US. It's been from the tip of Baja all the way to the top of North America and Prudhoe Bay, Alaska, and a gazillion places in between. Yeah, if you are following my channel, chances are this is the Revel that you are most familiar with. If you go back in time, you'll see some videos with the older Revel for sure, all of our Europe, Europe content. But we love Revels. We they've, do. they've treated us well. And you know, we've really pushed the Revel thing, I think to the max, with <laughs> a family of three with our big yellow lab, Tucker, who's no longer with us. It's kind of sad, but um, we had all that plus all the, the gear and paddling gear and stuff we do in a Revel. And it was tight. People ask us, right? Like, would How do you, you do it? Yeah, would you recommend a Revel for a family of three? Um, well, I wouldn't trade our travels in Europe for anything is my answer. Um, but what we did do is we modified it so that it was a lot more comfortable. We actually added a Winnebago Hike towable behind the Revel and for that, that was a perfect setup for a family of three with a big dog. That gave us extra food storage, extra cooking area, extra bedroom for Abby. And eventually we got that when Abby was about 16 years old and it was perfect. We called it Abby's caboose. And when she was being um, a teenager, we'd send her back there. She had her space, we had our space. And that's how we all still like each other. <laughs> and, and camper trailers are a great combination to have with a Rebel. Like, you know, I don't know if you're like, you have grandkids or you're like us, you have kids. It's a way to um, maximize some space. And then when you want to go on a more adventurous trip, we all could sleep in the Revel, right? Like we did Europe that way. And um, we, we had a fold out bed in the Revel that kind of went across the dinette by the door. 
and that was Abby's room, but it, it was tight. I don't know if I would recommend that. As a full-time option. As a full-time option. As a weekend option, it's fantastic. Maybe six, seven months at a time if you're going somewhere really cool and exciting. And, and kind of that was it for Europe for us. Having the tight quarters in such an exciting place, yeah. it made up for it. I think we would all agree it was definitely worth doing. All right, so okay. Revels. So we love Revels. We um, love Sprinters. Every RV we've ever had has been on a Sprinter. We just um, love vans though, really. I think as much as we talk about all the different rigs, and especially now as, a, as, a, as two in a Revel, um, we find that it's, it's- It's good. It's good. It's got a lot of space. I mean, we always probably want a little more space when you're parked, but when you're driving- It's perfect. It's perfect. Yep. It'll take us where we want to go. We love going off road. We love um, being able to park in a single parking place. So all of those things um, outweigh the little bit of lack of space that we have. And maybe the Sprinter van platform in particular has kind of been our choice all along because, I mean, at first when we got it, it was the only kind of narrow RV on the market. The Winnebago View was kind of what they call a skinny Winnie. And um, it was just that. We liked how skinny and nimble it was and that we could get around. Easy to drive. Easy to drive. We fell in love with the Sprinter platform there and it served us well. I mean, we've probably driven what? At one point I, I counted it up. it up. You it, did? I did. I just did the math on this. We have driven over 360,000 miles in the last 10 years in Sprinter vans. Wow, that's a lot of Sprinter miles. So, <laughs> so yeah, we're really familiar with them. They're, they're very comfortable to us. And then now with the, with the four wheel drive Sprinters, you know, I feel like it is the most capable van on the market for getting in the off out of the way off-roady kind of places and then with agile off-road all the amazing upgrades they've done it just really makes that sprinter van capable okay i've got another question so and this is probably the second most commonly asked question are you guys retired oh yeah gosh. and i think what people really want to know is how do we afford to travel like this i think that's the underlying question yeah that's another one that's kind of like where you're from that's a hard one to answer sometimes but i think people are shocked to know no we're not retired we work every day we work from the road i'm a professional photographer at kathy is an amazing writer we have traditionally um done everything from when we had a place in colorado we had a professional photography studio we did high-end wedding and portrait photography we've also worked two decades in the outdoor industry doing um, outdoor photography, being rock climbing, skiing, kayaking, general camping, backpacking, all that kind of stuff. We've done pretty much everything you can do in professional photography, maybe, yeah. um, in general terms. But um, nowadays, what do we do for work? Well, we are brand ambassadors for Winnebago and Mercedes, and that um, has us wearing a lot of different hats. So sometimes we're product testing a new product. Sometimes we are doing a um, photography campaign for a brand new product. Sometimes we are um, writing articles for winnebagolife.com. Um, all different kinds of things, all different kinds of hats that we wear for that. So we've basically taken our skills as writers and photographers and we do a lot of stuff around that. And now that's transformed into this YouTube channel, right? Exactly. And we still do commercial photography. We still write for various publications. So it's a little bit of all of our favorite things. Somehow we've um, come to this magic um, concoction of our dream career that utilizes all of our best skills and favorite things to do. We and it, it's funny now, right? It's like, like, I don't even know when I'm working and when I'm not working because... That's good because you work all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I, I love photography. I love telling stories. I love creating beautiful images. I love now doing, you know, motion content and video. And um, it's been a blast. And I love telling stories and sharing our experiences from the road. So you guys are a really motivating and important part of our journey and our work and we absolutely love creating this content for you. We wake up every morning and like, okay, what are we gonna do today? And how are we gonna film it? And all of those things. And it, it's, we wouldn't have it any other way. We absolutely yeah. love it. It's funny, we, we, it seems like our normal life most of the time, but when she just said that, I'm thinking, gosh, this, this is pretty cool because this is my dream. You know, I've got a degree in photography, 
that I got when we met at the University of Oklahoma. But, I, you know, I never dreamed that this love for making images and cameras and being out there in the world would take, in, take in us where we are now. And then Kathy being able to write about it. But she can put this beautiful story together and then with, with my images, it's, it's, a really, it's a really great team that we have here and we really love it. All right. Thank you guys for motivating us to get <laughs> yes. up every day, get out and do something rad and capture it all to bring back to you. Yeah, because what's a story in pictures if you don't have anyone to share it with? <laughs> We're pretty blessed for sure. All right, what's your next question? Okay, let's see. I think we've covered a lot of them. Uh, oh, do you have a house? Oh, well, we did. <laughs> we did. We had a house until June 16th, 2014. We sold our house, put a bunch of stuff in storage. Where was our house? Our house was in Boulder, Colorado. Yeah. We lived there for almost 20 years. That fateful June of 2014, we said goodbye to the house. We haven't had a home ever since. Well, that's not true. We haven't had a house ever since. Yeah, we think of ourselves not homeless, but home free. Home free. <laughs> well, we do have family um, all over the place, and it's great to swing in and um, hang out with them. And you know, like during COVID, we spent a bunch of time at Kathy's mom's house. That was a good little place for us to um, not be trying to figure out what to do in that you know sketchy time. So we hung out there for a bit, but. Um, yeah, no, no permanent dwelling, yep. but we do have lots of friends and family and a lot of places that when we go there, we feel like we're home. And it's funny how we can roll into a place like Buena Vista, Colorado or Springdale, Utah, or, you know, Huntington Beach or Oklahoma City and Hot Springs, Arkansas and places in the East Coast too. And we feel like we're at home when we roll in there. And it's, it's really cool. It's great. I think that's a pretty good I think that's group about of it. a lot of the questions. Now, I'm sure you guys are going to write questions down below. I encourage you to do that. And you're probably going to have some amazing questions that we wished we would have answered right now. But put them um, in the comments below and we'll answer them on the next one. We will. And if you guys like this, we'll certainly do more update videos, tell you about where we are, what's going on and answer some maybe the some of the behind the scenes questions. But um, for now, I think it's about to rain and we got a ferry boat to catch. We are coming from Juneau, Alaska, and we're making our way south, south further. I'm not gonna say where, but we are going further south on the ferries. It's been a wonderful time here in Alaska. So if you like this video, hit like and subscribe down below. And I hope I see you somewhere over the horizon. Take care, guys. Starting to sprinkle. We better get <laughs> out of here. <laughs>